based on the Amazon effect. Yeah. Or we're defining it in the context of the supply chain for um, so Amazon being at the very forefront on the market, front facing the customers and wanting to extend that last mile to the customer, mm -hmm. um, and where they're them being primarily the just in time e commerce software leveraged model facing the market in the context of the near sourcing, yeah, uh, for to to be able to respond rapidly to. Uh, local local content preferences and, yep. and increased customization requirements for for the customer, and where Amazon has had to invest so much in their physical infrastructure supply chain mm -hmm. to catch up to keep up with um, customer requirements on the retail front. Um, what does that say? What does the Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods say about manufacturers' requirements to invest in their supply chain infrastructure, if, if at all. In whose? In manufacturers to, to invest in their own physical oh, infrastructure oh. supply chain. Meaning like physical Meaning, buildings? So, so Amazon is already, it's, it's, a soft, it's a software powerhouse. They have yeah. the technology, they have the software, and they're investing in new technologies. But this acquisition of Whole Foods sheds the light that they just made a ma major brick and mortar physical infrastructure acquisition. Right. And so building the last mile to the customer, yeah. so if you take that supply chain end to end, tracking it back to the manufacturing supply chain, what does that move by Amazon where obviously it's very intimidating for them to get into manufacturing where they clearly have their finger on the pulse of what the most highest demand product is. If they were to partner up with whatever contract manufacturer to start making it very uh, scary to yeah. manufacturers in that market. What does that move by Amazon to make that physical infrastructure acquisition of Whole Foods, if anything, say about manufacturers' requirements to invest in their physical infrastructure supply chain? In well, I, I think that it's, um, it's uh, I think Amazon in general, the, 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 I can see how you make the, the relation with the Whole Foods thing, so it, it could very well be that it's, it prompts them, but I think, Amazon in general is, or the Amazon effect, like basically is showing that technology is, um, if you aren't leveraging technology, you probably aren't gonna stay in business because it's just gonna cost you too much money. Um, and you're not gonna be fast. That's actually more important than the money, so fast. So, cause you know, technology will speed things up. So I think that it's definitely, Amazon in general is definitely prompting them, you know, I don't mean directly, but the, the effect of Amazon is prompting them to invest in their technology. I see a lot of investment in um, robots and in you know, systems between their suppliers and them. How do they better collaborate? So they're, the smart ones are investing. The so-so the, the, um, ones will probably eventually just you know, go by the wayside. That's how it works. <laughs> but yeah, the smart ones are seeing that as a need to invest. Um, and to your point about like maybe adding buildings, yeah, I think that they need to be thinking about how they near source, because it doesn't always have to, in this case, it probably, you know, they have a different strategy because they're big, but um, you can have innovative transportation techniques, you can collaborate even with customers or, you know, or other people um, to have store in their facilities. You don't have to own everything. Um, you don't even have to do all 3PL, you can, I mean, that's what, that's what makes it worthwhile to collaborate up and down your supply chain. You never know. They might be located where you need to have some goods for customers that are key to you. Well, why not just, you know, make a trade, you know, pay them something to store something there. And so I think that they're thinking about what to do. And they would, customers, if anything else, would drive them to add facilities but they're not gonna, add, it's like people, they're not gonna add facilities back at the rate they used to have them, if that makes sense. Like, you know, I said they're adding people again, but they're not adding them at the same rate that they were before because, well, one, they aren't available with enough high skills. Two, they're automating um, and, you know, et cetera. So it's similar, you know, I think they're definitely not gonna pop up with a bunch of buildings because Amazon did, but they will think about should I? Well, it, it's also very <laughs> interesting because given your role in Apex uh -huh. and you're, you're interfacing with, with the manufacturing community, 
that um, so with Amazon starting out at a primarily software virtual e-commerce model, they're building their um, logistics and retail supply chain from scratch right. and making these physical uh, infrastructure acquisitions. Whereas the manufacturing supply chain more upstream, they um, have experienced the uh, sort of deconstruction of their physical uh, supply chain over time. And now they're being forced with these um, rapid response requirements in their supply chain to respond right. to Amazon's requirements and the market's requirements that I guess ultimately what I'm trying to get at is is to see that that direct tie um, what Amazon's physical infrastructure acquisition that they just did what it dictates to the requirements or what what does that imply to the requirements of the manufacturers back upstream to I think it depends rebuild where their now. supply chain so like I, I see where I see where you're coming from. So like if they're, let's just say they're in Asia, then yeah they're going to be thinking about how to rebuild their supply chain closer to their customers. And if their customers are here in the United States, they could be thinking about here. They could be thinking about Mexico. They could be thinking about Canada. But they're going to be thinking about putting manufacturing closer to the customer because it's just not going to work to have it on the water for you know basically the lead times are typically like three months. Doesn't mean that it's how long it takes in the water, but that's just how long it takes. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going to think about it. Now, what I was answering before, because I was thinking in terms of they have facilities in the U.S. Do I, I have two facilities? Do I need three? What I was saying is, from that point of view, not thinking Asia, not thinking Mexico, not worrying about other places, just U.S., that they would start to evaluate that now. That doesn't mean that they would add it, because they might find a way to collaborate with someone else um, to do it instead uh, for them or with them or, or who knows what and with software you can do a lot of things where you can have virtual warehouses you know you can figure out what's going on so in general it will prompt though more people to be thinking about um, you know like one really successful manufacturer that I worked with they believed completely in vertical integration so they pretty much make make everything you know they make the parts that they use in the machines that they use to produce uh, you know, lighting that they use, then they paint and they do everything all in their facility and they deliver it in a day because they, they're, that's what they think is, and, and, and I see some value, although I also see, um, like I was in a presentation last week, the